Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. And welcome to proper 15 in our church calendar. Today, speaking of church calendar, we have no uh, designated saint. So as always, we will honor the saints of our own lives. With that, we will beginning as usual on page 78 and uh, then moving to page 80. So let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's for he made it. Come, let us adore him. On page 82, we will say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our psalm today is number um, 106, part one, which begins on page 741. We'll read it responsibly by whole verse. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord, or show forth all his praise? Happy are they, are those who act with justice, and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help. That I may see the prosperity of your elect, and be glad when the, with the gladness of your people that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they did not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea, and it dried up, and he, and he led them through the deep, as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of those who hated him and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors. Not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang him songs of praise. But they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses in the camp, and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed Dathan, and covered the company of Byron. Fire blazed up against their company, and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of the Judges. There was a man of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, the 1100 pieces of silver, which were taken from you, about which you uttered a, a curse and also spoke it in my ears. Behold, the silver is with me, I took it. And his mother said, blessed be my son by the Lord. And he restored the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I consecrate the silver to the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it to you. So when he restored the money to his mother, his mother took 200 pieces of silver and gave it to the silversmith who made it into a graven image and a molten image and it was in the house of Micah. 
And the man Micah had a shrine, and he made an ephod and a teraphim, and installed one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Now there was a young man of Bethlehem in Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed from the town of Bethlehem in Judah to live where he could find a place. And as he journeyed, he came to the hill country of Ephraim, to the house of Micah. And Micah said to him, From where do you come? And he said to him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem in Judah, and I am going to sojourn where I may find a place. And Micah said to him, Stay with me, and be to me a father and a priest, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year, and a suit of apparel, and your living. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man became to him like one of his sons. And Micah installed the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and was in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that the Lord will prosper me, because I have a Levite as a priest. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first, less, um, first canticle. Let us turn to page 86 and say together canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. Our fathers had the tent of witness in the wilderness, even as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it, according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers in turn brought it, brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations which God thrust out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked leave to find a habitation for God of Je for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in the house made with hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and earth my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Did I not, did not my hands make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth against Stephen. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into the heavens and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together upon him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was consenting to his death. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Turning to page 94, let us say together canticle 19, the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing on his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever he does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, turning to page 96, we will affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen show us your mercy o lord and grant us your salvation clothe your ministers with righteousness let your people sing with joy give peace o lord in all the world for only in you can we live in safety lord keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who has given us... Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right. That we who cannot exist without you may by, by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as we gather ourselves to offer prayers for uh, the world and for our uh, loved ones, I offer you to add your own. We pray this day for the Church, for our Anglican Communion, and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Ifo within the Church of Nigeria, for our own Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, and Sean, our presiding bishop-elect. We pray for our Diocese of Maine and our Bishop Thomas, for the Congregation of Dark Harbor on Islesboro, for the victims of human trafficking, and for those who working to combat it. And we pray for our own parish of St. John's, our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed, for Connie, the Roy, the Roy family, Pang, and Joyce. We offer continued prayers for Patricia, William, Lori, Katie, Donald, Shannon, Dolores, Susan, John, Kathy, Kelly, Jenny, Sarah, Ross, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Lily, Erlene, and Eileen. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations, and for peoples in, pla in places of violence or oppression. We continue to pray especially for the people of Ukraine and the innocent victims of the fighting in Gaza, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We pray for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, and for our enemies and for those who wish us harm. And we pray that all people come to realize that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to keep expanding our understanding of who our neighbors are, and then love those neighbors as ourselves. We pray for the healing of divisions in our own nation and the celebration of diversity for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important is without human error, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress, especially Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Kara, our mayor and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land, that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. And we pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Nancy, Ted, and Francis. Finally, we pray for the departed, for, for Claudette Roy, for victims of the wars in Ukraine and in the Holy Land, for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Now turning to page 101, we will say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. We are always happy and grateful that you've been with us and hope that you'll uh, join us again soon, perhaps even tomorrow morning. In the meantime, may we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all this day. See you soon. <music>